All right, so we are here at uh, the Arts Hub uh, covering 2010 elections, municipal elections, and I'm here with Peter Lepretti, who uh, before was uh, the councillor for seven terms, and uh, it's a pleasure to have you here today. How are you? My pleasure. I'm doing fantastically well. Wonderful. And thank you both for, um, for inviting me. All right, awesome. So first off, um, Tell our viewers uh, about your political career. Well, I've been um, a city councillor since uh, 1985. Um, I was on North York Council. I was uh, then on uh, City Council, uh, Toronto City Council, when the amalgamation came in. And, um, and, and I served the community for over 21, 22 years. In, um, in 2006, I was not uh, successful. Um, and therefore, um, I went into uh, my professional, uh, professional, uh, I guess, avenues, and um, I've done well in the past four years in my in my profession. All right. Um, so uh, you know, having uh, a legacy in the community, um, what do you think the community thinks of you, or how the community sees you? Well, up to uh, April, uh, beginning of May of 2010, I had no intentions of running back for the election. No intentions whatsoever. On, um, I think it was the 1st or 2nd of May, I was invited to a, um, to a small gathering uh, where I was told that there would be about 15, 20 friends and at um, Travelodge Hotel, right on North Finch Avenue. Mm -hmm. Um, just to discuss a few issues that had to do with the community. Uh, when I walked in, I, I was amazed. There, there must have been about 130, 140 people. The elevators were full, the, uh, the corridors were full, the staircase uh, was full, the room that I was supposed to be in, there was no room uh, other than standing, uh, standing up positions only. And everybody asking me to, um, to return to uh, city politics. I tell you, I was overwhelmed. I mean, in my 20 years of experience, I never, ever received as much love and affection and attention that I, that I did in May. So I had very little time to, uh, to think about it. I asked my family, uh, you know, what their comments or what they thought about the, uh, this event that I sold at Travelodge Hotel. And, um, and my family said, if you really like to go back into politics, we will support you. And that's when I registered to, uh, to go in. So it was because of this event that took place um, uh, for which I, I, I honestly did not know uh, what to expect. Or I thought it was just a little gathering with uh, 15, 20 friends that wanted to talk about maybe business opportunities in the community. In fact, they, it was one of the most memorable events that I had in my life. OK, wow. Um. So what are some of the initiatives uh, you're currently or in the past involved in um, that will be informing uh, your work if you are successful? Well, there are two aspects to your question. One mm -hmm. is um, what I accomplished in 21 years. And uh, the accomplishments that I've, uh, that I've done was uh, the one that I believe is the most significant is the um, uh, subway to Jenny Steele's, to Killer Finch, to Shepherd and Cheswood. Um, my, my opponent in a newspaper article said that I was uh, lying to people in uh, voters because a subway will never come into this area. In fact, the subway was one of my projects for 20 years. And, um, and I was able to, uh, uh, you know, to contribute. I'm not saying that it's my doing, but I was able to contribute significantly by always bringing the subway to its forefront by lobbying the federal government, the provincial government, by being on TTC. So I've done an incredible amount of work for, uh, for the community. Um, the community did not appreciate this sort of work because they don't see any tangible uh, results of a subway. But I was appealing more to the young people to say a subway is an important thing, not only from, a, from an environmental uh, perspective, but also in terms of creating thousands of jobs for the next 10, 15 years, um, and spin-off jobs. Because yes, if you are employed in building a subway, 
chances are that you're going to go and buy a car, and therefore you're going to provide jobs for other people that making car. Or if you're involved with a subway, chances are that you're going to buy a house, and uh, you're going to spin off other jobs for people that uh, have to build that house. So uh, even the young people did not understand that kind of uh, uh, that kind of spin off that I wanted to give to the subway. So. I was not successful the last um, last election to parlay that kind of project into into votes because a lot of people, uh, mostly seniors that live in this area, says, "Well, what do I need a subway for?" And um, and so that's not uh, that did not go the way I thought it would go. Other projects um, that are very significant uh, and always to bring jobs in this area was the. Uh, in Canada, uh, the tennis center on York University in Shoreham. I mean, I, I, I was hoping to have that uh, prestigious sort of building where people from all over the world come to participate and be part of a very vulnerable community, very difficult community. And um, I tried some of those young people from these vulnerable communities to be part of this great, uh, uh, this great facility that we have in our community. So tennis. Uh, uh, the tennis center is my project because I did it uh, against the wishes of York University and also the wishes of the city of Toronto. Um, other projects that I'm very proud of is the soccer stadium at uh, Keel and Steels, uh, where hundreds of young people from the community are um, uh, have a, a prestigious uh, sort of field or venue for which they could uh, they could go on. Um, the community center, uh, this library, this uh, uh, theater was also one of my projects. The um, uh, Grand Ravine Community Center on uh, Oakdale was my, my project. There are about a hundred projects which I initiated despite the, the city of Toronto's um, uh, support. Mm -hmm. um, these are not uh, putting up a stop sign or resurfacing the street or, um, or fixing up uh, a sidewalk. Uh, these are projects that nobody thought about. That mm -hmm. you know, I put it upon myself to uh, to make it to make it happen, and so I'm very proud of them. Um, there is one other project that I <clears throat> that I that's very close to my heart uh, right now, and that is the saving of the uh, Finch Hospital. Uh, the Amber River Regional Hospital site, uh, Finch, is um, scheduled to uh, be shut down, um, and I mean shut down. Um, if we're going to lose this hospital, it would mean that um, um, 230,000 vehicles that go up and down Highway 400, and if anything happens in, on, on, um, on that stretch of the highway, we'll have zero hospitals. On the 401, in opposition to the 400, you now have four hospitals. Mm -hmm. You have North York General, you have Scarborough General, you have the one here, and, you have, and then you have the other one. So, um, it just doesn't make sense that on the 401 you have four hospitals, but on the 400 you have no hospitals. But aside from that, I mean, the jobs that, that this hospital provides to people in this community is also uh, significant. So you don't want to take that away from, uh, from the people that are here. And what are we going to replace it with? Are we going to replace it with additional high-rise buildings to, uh, to attract uh, additional people instead of jobs? That's not, uh, that's not there. But the very important thing, as I go around in the community and what people are telling us, is that we have a community that unfortunately cannot afford to have a taxi, right? Mm -hmm. Cannot afford even a TTC token. Because if you have a family member that is hospitalized, let's say a killer 401, A, you will not have a chance to go there and, um, and, and get a taxi to go back and forth to go and see your husband or your wife or your children. And two, if you're going by TTC, it's not that cheap either. Because mm -hmm. if you go there one, once a day, it's already $7. $7. But if you go there twice a day, it's $14. Um, and, and so a lot of the young people in particular that are not highly motivated to go for counseling, they're not highly motivated to go and get, uh, um, you know, be part of a, of a, um, of a therapy group uh, such as uh, uh, drug rehabilitation or, or whatever, uh, whatever uh, therapy group that we, we want to have at the hospital. If it is a walking distance, chances are that they will go there. Mm -hmm. And we have high schools and closest vicinity that, that could go, that could access. But if they have to go all the way to 401 and, and Kiel, that kind of proximity will be a deterrent or discouraging 
people from going and attending there. Mm -hmm. So once again, they're penalizing in all fronts. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, it's going to mean that everybody talks about Jennifer Finch being uh, you know, a community need. So why would you take a $2 billion, $2 billion, I mean, I'm not talking about 100,000, a million, $2 billion worth of economics out of this area and bring them somewhere else. Um, it just, to me, it makes no sense. Now, you're saying, how can you, a simple Toronto councillor, in, insignificant councillor, going to save a hospital? It's, it's, it's right. But you know, don't forget that I saved that hospital twice before. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to go to kill and um, uh, kill a shepherd, and I moved the community uh, in opposition, and so we stopped that development. And that time was supposed to be moving again, and we weren't, we weren't doing it. This time, I think it's going to be uh, very, very difficult, um, but it's the number one issue in my, in my agenda. Um, I think that you need leadership, you need uh, people that know what they're saying when they go uh, to lobby government, uh, government circles, and I feel, find that I have that kind of skill, that kind of uh, knowledge, you know, to, uh, to give the best shot to save this hospital. We're definitely going to come back to the hospital. Um, so I'm going to ask you a series of questions sure. around issue-based and your thoughts. Uh, so the first one, um, what are your thoughts on policing? Policing is, um, is um, uh, to me, is a good thing to have um, as long as they don't, um, they don't penalize the good citizens that we have here. And many times I have discussed this with the uh, police department that I don't mind having additional police uh, um, uh, keeping the peace and keeping uh, the area safe and, uh, and, and in tranquility. But many times I find that they are there to penalize a citizen, a mother, that is uh, uh, rushing home to feed the child and does not stop properly at the stop sign and gets a ticket for, uh, for not stopping. I wish that we had the intelligence service in this community that can go to some of the difficult areas and and work in those difficult areas to try to find out what is the problem and how to, say, to solve the problem. Not to give somebody uh, you know, a small speeding ticket, like I'm flabbergasted by the, by the fact that the police department is so shoreham at the entrance of York University and they penalize all these uh, poor students and, and maybe some professors that are going 48, uh, 49 or 52 uh, kilometers an hour in a 40, in a 40 zone. I mean, that's not what I need policing here for. I need policing that will exercise their judgment in how to fight the, the serious crime and, and, and the difficult crime in our community, and, um, and less in the, you know, intervention in very minor, uh, minor things. Now, that doesn't mean that I espouse that people can break the law all the time, but what I'm saying is, um, yes, bring us the police, but think of uh, intervention first in the crime areas and in the difficult areas that we have, and then try to uh, try to develop a relationship, try to develop constancy, try to develop knowledge. I mean, a lot of these officers don't live in the area; they don't. Um, uh, they love to work in the area, but you know, the, you know, they're staying completely outside of the uh, outside of this community. Uh, it's nice to know that some young people may know the police officer um, for two years, or three years, or four years, or five years, instead of having. Uh, so many offices that change from 31 division to 33 to 52 to whatever. The maybe, constants is not there. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not focused enough. But uh, I'm speaking more around racial profiling, uh, police misconduct, um, some of the allegations that hasn't been seen through. I'm talking more about criminalizing young people and crim the criminalization of. Uh, uh, communities. Yeah, it's a difficult, diff very difficult um, area. In terms of racial profiling, I certainly uh, I'm totally against it. When we collect data, it should not be collected then uh, uh, by attributing uh, things to, uh, to to races. Uh, if you want to collect data, you don't need that kind of um, uh, collection of data. Um, in terms of uh, uh, the police uh, doing a better job in um, in handling uh, the situation, yeah, I, I would be very uh, very critical of the police department. Uh, there is um, a situation where um, uh, a young fellow was um, uh, was shot by the police um, uh, close to York University, lives as Jenny Shoreham, 
and I've been in touch with her family and, 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 and some of the friends, and I'm very concerned about uh, how uh, someone that probably stole a car or, or had, uh, had very little uh, criminal uh, and, and, and the need to, to have that kind of intervention, heavy duty intervention by the police department. I think that there is a need to improve, um, uh, to improve uh, the police image in this community, the police work in this community, and, um, and the community police relations are not at its best right now. Okay. Um, next one, um, what are your thoughts on arts and culture in the community? If you go on my website, I mean, I, I, was, uh, um, I was very much uh, active in the, in the arts in the community. I mean, York Woods um, Theater uh, was the first theater that uh, provided every single year classical concerts. I mean, can you imagine having a classical concert, concert right at Jenna Finch, where you bring in a band with opera singers uh, um, on, a, on a, you know, an everyday basis? Uh, well, I would say in January, once or twice in January, once or twice in February, and once or twice in March. I remember that in January, we used to uh, celebrate um, uh, Verdi. In uh, February, we used to celebrate Schubert um, and uh, Chopin. In March, we used to celebrate uh, some of the other classics. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of in terms of that, uh, um, uh, I was very much active. I had um, a dance view uh, concert band performing uh, in here, a forty member band. We also had the. Um, um, uh, some of the theater groups, uh, that uh, the Cana Theater, which is a group that uh, taught ch young children how to act. Um, my feeling has been all the time that there's more raw talent in this community than anywhere else in the city. Mm. By meaning raw talent is talent that is natural to some of these young people. But there's nobody that is giving any money or any funding um, in order to make this raw talent a real talent. And uh, unless you pay good money to go downtown or to go some other places where you, you have to spend uh, a large amount of money in order to mm -hmm. participate, uh, these kids will never have an opportunity to do that. This is why I fought very hard to have this, um, uh, this theater here so that we could have uh, all these functions and uh, facilitate the, the young people that wanted to be part of the arts and the theater in particular. Um, so what are your thoughts on economic and employment opportunities? All right, so uh, that is a very major concern for this area, and I explain why. The national average for, for, the, for the country is about 8.3% 8 um, unemployment. In Toronto, it's about 9%. Uh, in, in the area called Jane Finch, it fluctuates between 23 and 26%. Let's take the 23%. Why is it so high? Because you have a lot of residential development taking place and very few job opportunities for the people in the area, specifically young people. I mean, the major problem is the young people that cannot access jobs in this community. Therefore, why is it that we continue to build high-rise development in this area? They just approved another eight buildings a Finch and Sentinel three weeks ago. That means another 5,000 people are going to be coming in this area with car increases and everything else. So what happens is that there is, uh, there is this major problem in our community. Why did I fought so hard for the subway? I fought so hard for the subway to allow jobs to come in this area. Tennis Canada to allow jobs to come in this area. And everything else that I've done in the past 20 years was to try to bring balance in this community. I think that if the hospital is going to move away from this area, there will be $2 billion worth of, um, of collateral problems that they're mm -hmm. going to create. Why? Because the, the hotel will suffer uh, if they shut down the hospital. The, um, uh, the plazas will suffer as a result of the closing of the hospital. The, uh, uh, even the gas uh, distributor will, uh, will suffer because of that. What will happen to the offices? What will happen to the sites? Are they going to put in additional high-rise people for, to allow people to come in here? Or are they going to try to bring in, um, uh, I guess, uh, uh, opportunities for employment, such as office buildings, um, et cetera, et cetera? Mm -hmm. So it's a major critical problem that we have in this community, and very few people know about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Um, what are your thoughts around uh, the TTC expenditure? You spoke about it um, throughout the interview a little bit, but um, how will we, um, in terms of employment, guarantee some of these jobs within the community? If I was still in council, I would have put in that, um, that prerogative that a lot of the employment opportunities would be given first to high employment areas, in particular the area adjoining where the, the, the stations are. Um, throughout my career, I've had that this um, employment uh, days where I brought in the major players of this community at the Driftwood uh, Community Center to attract um, employers to come in. I had many discussions with York University. They first did not want to participate, then they participated. I brought in the police, I brought in the fire department, I brought in, um, the, um, um, as I said, the, the, the hospital, the, um, uh, the university itself, and many of the other Apotex, and many of the other big employers of this area, to come in and try to encourage young people, give information about their, about their, um, uh, their work and what kind of uh, skills that's needed, and invite the young people in the area so that they could just drop in in the community center and see what, what it takes to be a police officer, see what it takes to be um, a fireman or a firewoman, um, and, and, and get that kind of proximity. In the past four years, I've not seen anything like it. There's nothing, there's no bridge between um, the community and some of these high employers that are not part of this community anymore. Okay. Now, some of uh, these employment opportunities are uh, gatekeeped by unions. How? How will you and your office be able to negotiate, um, again, um, community um, accessing within um, these opportunities that are gatekeeped by uh, unions? Many, I would say that um, I would be very happy uh, if we could get um, this unemployment rate from 23 to 15% in this area uh, in the next four to five years. And many of the people, unfortunately, are not ready to go into, um, into, the, um, into the unions. I have run a couple of schools in this area um, where people are attracted to get uh, the job training, retraining uh, for laying ceramics or doing drywall or painting or, or uh, doing a bit of electrical, a bit of, um, of uh, you know, plumbing and then be on their own, to set up their own little business, to set up their own little, uh, little entrepreneur. And that's what we've been doing uh, for the past, um, I would say, 15 years. Did it work? Out of a school of 20, uh, maybe three or four will start their own business, another three or four will go into the unions, um, another three or four will, uh, will, not, uh, have, uh, will not have had any, any um, success. Um, but all that contributes. Mm -hmm. So if I do a little, and, and, and the, the federal member of parliament will do a little, and the provincial member will, be, will do a little, and some of the other, um, some of the other uh, you know, major employers in the area would do a little. Yes, we could rely on, uh, on, 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 the, on the unions, but we can do it on our own as well. Okay, all right. Um... Recently, we had um, issues around our schools um, being targeted for closure. Um, what are your thoughts around uh, saving our school campaign? It, a small victory has happened in the community, um, but we, we know they could come back. What are your thoughts on that? I never believed that, that uh, the, uh, the school board would even phantom the idea that they would close, uh, would, would close a school. Sure. I mean, there are theatrics that sometimes we put into place um, in, uh, in politics to bring attention to an issue or to bring attention to something else. And sure, the school board is, uh, is facing a number of um, pressures, financial pressures. But to, school, to shut down a school in an area such as uh, Shoreham or in an area such as Blacksmith, it would have been totally, totally against uh, um, everything that we've been preaching for uh, for generations. You cannot mm -hmm. shut down a school. Let's see, maybe there is a way to uh, uh, to reform um, uh, the school. Look at uh, what the expenses are. Do we need, uh, let's say, a principal for a school that is uh, uh, only with 300 students? Or could it be a principal that can do two schools? Um, but not shutting down a school. I mean, 
especially in low-income areas and vulnerable communities and very difficult communities, why would you even consider that? Mm -hmm. You know, this is, you need, these children do not have the, the ability to uh, go on their own and go to another school. Um, you know, uh, the parents are, are sometimes very much, um, um, very much scared, that, you know, so they want to take their children uh, to walk them to school, so they want to be, to be with them. I, I think that it would have been a total, total and unnecessary stupidity to, uh, to shut down schools in this area. Okay. What are your thoughts on uh, social housing? Social housing is, uh, is a major, I would say, a major um, uh, challenge. Um, see, some of these housing units were built um, in the early 60s. Um, in the early 60s, they, they were okay. They were beautiful homes. Um, right now, we are in 2010. So we have new technology, we have new insulation, we have new, um, uh, new, thing, new roofing. Uh, that can be put into place. Would it make sense to keep the same type of housing and try to patch it every time that there's a problem? Or does it make sense to rebuild, um, uh, you know, areas by area and, and try to make it um, uh, much more livable, much more safe, much more, and in much, uh, much safer environment? That, that is the challenge that I, that I think uh, uh, I will be very uh, much involved in the future. It's a challenge that I like to see. Um, to see how we can improve it, because the city of Toronto spends an inordinate amount of money only um, uh, patching up things uh, in, in these uh, in, in buildings or in these uh, townhouses. And I think that we need, uh, uh, we need some sort of major surgery instead of treating uh, uh, cancer with an aspirin. <laughs> Um, so a follow-up to that is uh, gentrifications happen throughout the city. We've seen uh, the positive and the negative. Um, so we know that Jane and Finch, uh, particular location within the Jane and Finch area, is up next. What are your thoughts on that? I'm, um, uh, as I said, I'm very open. I, uh, it's not something that I can say that I have developed uh, uh, a great expertise, but I'm very open. I'm very open to, um, uh, to consult with the community, to um, see uh, to hear uh, the pros and cons, and uh, and face whatever challenge that we will be uh, will be brought to us. Um, as I said, the councillor uh, is not an expert on school issue. It's not an expert on transportation issue. It's not an expert on financial issue. It's not an expert as to there is a need that to consult to to go and, and 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 speak to people, ordinary people, you know, university professors. Uh, uh, other other uh, experienced uh, professionals in the community, and then you prepare a challenge to face whatever challenge you have to uh, that you have to do in a in an intelligent way. Okay. Um, so poverty, poverty. Uh, there is a growing disparity between rich and poor. Uh, this community started off in the 70s, mainly uh, middle class, and now we're seeing a huge shift. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Um, in terms of not just when we say poverty, we're talking about the cutbacks in social assistance. We're talking about um, yeah. we're talking about a lot when we're you know lack of childcare. Sure. You're not going to solve thoughts? poverty uh, overnight. Uh, it has been a struggle of mine, and I think I lost the election. I lost um, the 2006 election mainly because um, people did not understand what I was um, what I was saying. In this community, you have um, a lot of people that have a lot. Mm -hmm. And then there is um, a greater number that are very little. If you want to, if you want to create a safe environment, you cannot continue with people that have a lot and people that are very little. Mm -hmm. You have to sort of bring in a bit of balance. Maybe this has to come down a bit, and this has to go up. Mm -hmm. And only the way, if you bring in balance in this community, you're going to make make it a safe, livable, and a great community. And as I said, a lot of people may not have understood what I was saying. Why would I, why would I do certain things? Why would I fight so hard for a subway, but I did not fight hard to cut the tree in front of your home? Or why did I work so hard to get a community center or Tennis Canada, but I did not fix the sidewalk in front of your, in front of your home? 
you need to bring in employment opportunities. You need to bring part it in this community. You need to bring in people that that uh, are independent, autonomous, not dependent on uh, on government uh, subsidies all the time. You need mm -hmm. to give them the freedom to do it. And the only way we do it is to bring in you know uh, the level uh, up from from what it is right now. Okay, how are you going to do that? Jobs, 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 jobs. Okay. The, uh, you know, the, the high school rate to drop out in this community is very high. Uh, so we need to address that, uh, that aspect. The um, employment uh, uh, situation or unemployment is very, very high in this area as well. Um, we are continuously building and attracting residential units in this area instead of saying to the, uh, to the city, forget about more residential buildings. Give us office buildings so people can go to work in these office buildings. Uh, my dream was um, I stopped the northwest corner of Jenna Finch for 20 years, not because I don't want people to live here, mm -hmm. but because I wanted to bring that kind of balance in this community. My dream would have been why build the Ministry of Citizenship and Immigration, a young, um, young and uh, shepherd, let's say, when you can build the Ministry of Transportation and Immigration rather than Jenna Finch and the lands that, you, that are there. Why build a new hospital at, um, at 401 in Kiel when you have all the land in an existing hospital in your university that is going for a medical school right over, uh, all close by? Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make sense. There are people that have no vision in this community. They have no intent to make this community better. And I'm very ashamed that I'm part of the system, but I want to change the system. This is why I'm coming back. Actually, my next question was going to be, what is your vision for the Jane and Finch and Ward 8 community? My vision is uh, to have uh, better employment opportunities, to have uh, uh, neighborhood, neighborhoods that are safe and secure, to have, um, um, to have people that, uh, uh, particularly the lower uh, in, in the poverty line, to, to increase, um, uh, to be better. Um, uh, so that they will be independent and autonomous and uh, if they have jobs. Uh, my vision is to see this community that, uh, that will flourish, that will be um, a community that everybody can be proud of, that they can walk and see uh, the good things of this community, because there are many, many good things in this community. Um, they're wonderful people, many wonderful people. These are the unsung heroes that uh, nobody knows about, and yet they work behind the scenes, they work uh, in the community centers, they work uh, um, out of their home, they work out of their, um, you know. Those are the people that, uh, that we need to um, show an appreciation, um, appreciation for. And, um, and that's my, uh, more my, vi my vision for this community, to get uh, uh, schools that are, that are good, uh, training, better training opportunities, um, try to identify young people that uh, uh, may not become uh, the lawyers or the doctors of the future, but they may be the very skilled, the good skilled laborers in this area. Encourage those people that want to become lawyers and doctors by forcing York University to, um, uh, to accept them as students, because as you know, uh, and I mean, I'm not sure how much time we, we have, but one of my big fights was that York University leaves um, a percentage of people coming from all over the world, uh, but was not able to put in a percentage of young people that come from the Jane Finch area to, to go into, mm -hmm. um, into law school. And I've been having so many fights with York that I, I feel like a pugilist that I've been punched so many times that I don't, <laughs> there's no more room to, uh, uh, to maneuver. And I remember uh, speaking to the, um, uh, to the dean of the faculty of law and saying, Yes, you have somebody coming from Hong Kong that can afford to pay twenty-five thousand dollars, and you give them the last place in the in the in the medical in the faculty of um, of law. But what about this young uh, Jane Finch uh, person that had seventy-seven percent as opposed to eighty percent? What am I going to tell him or his parents to say? Sorry, there's no room for you at York University in the faculty of law. Mm -hmm. It's just not fair. It just doesn't. Uh, you know, you're part of a of a community, you have to be part of that community. It's learning that equitable thing, right? Exactly. That's yeah, equitable. Um, so this upcoming elections, we have uh, trustees also that are um, campaigning. Are you willing to share um, who you're backing up? Um, Both Catholic and uh, public. 
It is a very difficult, uh, difficult situation. At this point, um, in terms of the, um, of the public school, I'm very impressed with um, uh, Michael Sullivan, okay. who was tried it before, and the, it gives me the, um, uh, an indication that he truly cares for this community. And I'll tell you why. He's, um, by profession, he's a lawyer. Um, and, um, and I've asked him, well, why would you want to leave your, uh, you know, uh, your, your, your job, your, what, what, you, what you have, in order to serve the, uh, serve the you know, in the Jane Finch area? What, what is the motivation? And I was stunned by his, uh, by his response. It was an honest response. He's saying, I want, to com I want to serve this community because there's so much to do, especially within the schools, and to bring in what I've been talking about, the empowerment that is not there, um, to, you know, to allow these young people to surface and to allow them to um, continue to build on, um, on, um, on their raw talent and what they have. And I've been impressed with him, so I will, um, I will be supporting uh, Michael Sullivan. Um, in terms of the, of the separate school board, it's a bit uh, of a difficult uh, uh, position. I will be making up my mind up this weekend uh, okay. after consulting with, uh, with a few people. Um, but, you know, uh, they're all excellent individuals to, um, uh, you know, anybody that um, wants to serve this community in whatever, um, whatever shape, whatever form, um, should be congratulated because mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's an honor and a privilege, uh, but also a, a dedication, a commitment, and a passion for things. Absolutely. So my next one will be about the mayor. Um, is there anybody uh, you're supporting? I'm staying totally out. I, <laughs> I'm disenchanted with the, uh, with the mayor's race. Um, there's some good points and bad points on uh, almost all of them. Uh, I can't uh, say right now that I can identify with one mayor in, uh, in particular. Um, you know, uh, there is, perhaps it's too early on in the, in the election, uh, but at this point I, I, I really do not have uh, a person that, uh, that I can say, gee, you know, I support that person mm -hmm. uh, because he sees the same way. I mean, there are some people that speak the language that people want to hear. You know, cut, 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 save taxes, whatever. But then they don't see the, the, the problem that you're causing. Mm -hmm. That is that, you know, uh, you're going to put people on, uh, on the unemployment line. You're not going to have job opportunities for people. And then there are people that talk about privat privatizations of, uh, of um, uh, hydro and, and other things. Mm -hmm. And they don't see that uh, uh, water, electricity should not be privatized because these are essential services in our community and we need to, we need to be in control. Mm -hmm. we, are, uh, we are politicians that can be elected or not elected according to what we do. And if we don't do a good job, we can be booted out. Okay. If you give it in the private hands, who is accountable for that? Mm -hmm. right? They can do whatever they want. So, um, so there are some good points and some people have bad points, but at this point, I'm totally uh, not sure who I'm going to be supporting. Okay, that's fair. Um, so in closing, um, if you'd like to share with our viewers um, any thoughts that uh, you'd like to give them to take with them sure. to voting day? I have had uh, this great privilege and honor to serve this community for over 20 years. Um, four years ago, it was uh, a wonderful opportunity for me to, uh, to stay uh, away from politics. I went into my, uh, in my profession and I was um, elated uh, to, uh, to work uh, uh, as a businessman and trying to understand or being on the other side of the fence. Um, I invested very heavily in this community. I bought um, uh, a medical building at Jenny Shoreham with a couple of partners. I put in uh, a walk-in clinic, I put in uh, an assessment center, I put in uh, pharmacy, um, I put in uh, uh, x-ray lab and, um, and, and whatever. And I've done fantastically well as a person, which gave me uh, more time to reflect upon seeing both sides of the coin. Uh, one from a public service perspective, one from a private uh, ownership perspective. So I can finally say, yes, I've been on both sides and I can see the differences of the, of the two. Um, you know, I care uh, 
deeply if, uh, for seniors, uh, people that cannot afford to do it. So I put in uh, a doctor at 35 Shoreham um, to allow these people to just come downstairs when it's cold, on uh, uh, a cold day, mm -hmm. instead of going outside and, and, and getting worse physically, they can have their own medical services and, and the doctoring that, uh, that they need in there. I'm now in the process of expanding it to 2999 Jane Street, which is another senior building, 3680, which is another senior building. Um, just giving back to the community, and it's a pleasure uh, to give it back to uh, to give back to the community. I've taken so much out of this community, so many beautiful experiences that uh, money cannot buy. Uh, the Jane Finch community gave me an opportunity to bring um, um, an invitation to the Pope. Uh, John Paul II mm -hmm. when, uh, the, for the World Youth Day here in Canada. Jane Finch community gave me uh, the opportunity to meet with presidents, uh, with, um, uh, with uh, incredible experiences that I've had throughout the world. It's, it's about time and I, to get back uh, to Jane Finch, and I like, to, uh, I like to get back this time. All right. Thank you so much for your time today, Peter. My pleasure. Wonderful interview. Thank, Thank you. you.